Hello, this is Miss Herndon at Southwest Texas Junior College. This is a video about Chapter 9, Lab 1, for um, which is in Sam 2010. Um, specifically step 8 in lab 1. Okay, and I have opened the starting file and let me show you here, get on the right screen. Um, here is our information and instructions for step 8 and so we have a table here with some information in it and it says if the solver button does not appear on the data tab then you must use the add-ins page in the Excel options dialog box to add it. So I'm going to go over here and it, on your data tab if your solver isn't here then you'll need to go back to file and then options and then add-ins and here it says solver add-in so highlight it and then click OK and if yours hasn't been installed then that will put it through the little process and then you should be able to go to your data tab and solver should show up so you have to have solver for this okay now the instructions starting with step 8 select the shelving unit planning workforce worksheet I'm sorry so here's shelving unit planning and I'm going to go ahead and select it and use solver to maximize we want to maximize the number of units to manufacture in one week which is cell G9 so G9 is our objective by mixing the number of units to manufacture for each of the four types of cells which is cell C9 and F9. Okay, I don't want to get too far into this but um, without being able to um, walk it through every step. Okay, so we know that cell G9 is important and that's going to be our objective. So I'm going to click here on G9 and then in my data on my data tab I'm going to click Solver and here I'm going to simply click here on G9 and it'll change it to G9 because that's where my cursor is and it tells us that we wanted to maximize so we want to set this on maximize and we don't have a specific value we're going to change the variable cells which again our variable cells were in here and we it tells us that we want to do it by mixing the number of units to manufacture for each of the four types of units which is C9 to F9 so I'm going to highlight C9 to F9 okay now we've set our objective G9 by to the maximum by changing variable cells C9 to F9 and those are absolute cell references okay now we need to add the constraints here's our information for the constraints um, it says within the constraints of the problem the constraints include the total number of labor hours available this week cell G11 cannot exceed 5,200 hours. So let's do that one first. Cell G11 cannot exceed 5,200 hours. So let's add a constraint and our cell reference is G11 and it cannot exceed so it's got to be less than or equal to 5,200 and then we're going to simply click add because that's our first constraint and we can add a bunch of different constraints on the last one that we add then we can click OK okay let's go back to the problem now because we added our first one okay the second one is and the total amount of materials cell G12 cannot exceed 55,000 so G12 cannot exceed 55,000 
again my cursor is going to be here I'm going to go for G12 and it has to be less than or equal to 55,000 and I'm going to click add okay and it says additional constraints are listed in table one which is here and we're going okay let's let's stop there and let's do all of these okay for each one of these lines it actually has two constraints on it actually three constraints pardon me uh, for shelf three the, for the three shelf we have to produce at least one that's one constraint for the three shelf we have to produce no more than 30 produce at most and for the three shelf it has to be an integer so that's three different um, constraints for our solver so let's go ahead and put that first one in I need to move this out of the way let's see maybe I can just drop it down here there we go that's not going to work because as soon as I maximize this it's going to be gone sorry okay so uh, let's see the three shelf okay so for three shelf I'm going to click here and then the three shelf is right here the units to manufacture is C9 and we have to produce at least so it has to be greater than or equal to one and I'm going to click add again the three shelf units to manufacture have to produce at most 30 so it has to be less than or equal to 30 okay and again the three shelf units to manufacture have to be an integer click okay so let's go to the next line again this line has three different constraints the fourth shelf has to produce at least one that's one constraint it has to produce at most 30 so that's the second constraint and then the third constraint is it has to be an in integer so we're on the fourth shelf so for the cell reference I'm going to go to D9 this time and it has to produce greater than or equal to 1 and I'm click add again the four shelf units to manufacture have to be at most 30 so it has to be less than or equal to 30 and one more time the four shelf has to be an integer and then add okay the next line in the table again we'll have three constraints four shelf plus cabinet produce at least one produce at most 55 and it has to be an integer so the cell reference is going to be the four shelf plus cabinet units to manufacture which is E9 and it has to be at least one add and again the four shelf plus cabinet units to manufacture uh, produce at most 55 so it's less than or equal to 55 add and one more time four shelf plus cabinet and we want it to be an integer and we add okay and the last one is that we are hi thank you um, additional constraints okay let's see the last one is the entertainment center produce at least six and produce at most 55 and it must be an integer so let's do that one now so I'm going to click in the cell reference and then the entertainment center units to manufacture 
and it has to be greater than or equal to 6. And add. And it has to be produce at most 55. So again, it's the entertainment center units to manufacture. And it has to be less than or equal to 55. Add. And again, the last one is entertainment center units to manufacture has to be an integer. Okay. And that was our last constraint. Let's look at the problem again. Okay, so here we are, and that is the last of the constraints. So now to get out of the constraint window, I'm going to simply click cancel. I could have clicked OK with the last one, but now that if I, if I click it now, it'll give me a little error. So you have to click cancel if you don't click OK on the last one. And look at all the constraints that we added. So they're all there. Now, it tells us now that we have to use the simplex LP option and we want to instruct it to keep the solver solution. So down here select a solving method and we're going to use simplex LP and um, instruct solver to keep the solver solution. Okay so now we're going to click solve and here we want it to keep the solver solution Okay, so we're going to click OK. Sorry, I was reading again. And here is our information. So, it maximized the most number of units that we can produce using the constraints given for each of these um, items that we're producing. So, um, the entertainment center, it, we have to produce at least six, and that's what we were able to produce, only six but the other ones maximized out, so that was good. Okay, total hours for the week, all of that changed according to this information. And the total value of the materials also changed. Now, um, it says keep the, keep the save the solver model as follows with the solver, solver parameter windows open. Press the load save button and specify cell G16 as the range of cell range cell and press save and the solver model data will be saved in a column of data starting at G16 okay so we're going to go back to the solver and right here where it says load save and we're going to specify cell G16, which is here. And we're going to press save. Okay, and then we go solve again. And right here where it says reports, we want to create that. And there we go. Here's our answer report that's been created. We can see this here. And over here, all of the data has been filled in here. That was um, specific to this particular solver model. Okay, and step nine was create an answer report, which we did and rename the answer work, report worksheet as one week report. So we can rename it. And then we're going to go back and uh, mark as final. So protect workbook and mark as final. And the workbook will be marked as final and then saved. Click OK and it's final. And it says close the workbook and exit 
Excel, follow directions on the SAM website to submit your completed project. Please call me or let me know if you have any issues. Thank you.